Minor Details. I'm Nick. I'm James. And I'm Dave. And we are three industrial designers across the country. Sweating the small stuff. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I am not saying it's making any noises. Any catchphrases. <laughs> no catchphrases. <laughs> it's so hard not to make a noise. It does feel like we need a little bit extra something. Like we need like a... <laughs> an air horn. Yeah. You, oh, know. you just you need a triangle. So it goes <laughs> Ooh, a triangle. That'd yeah. be nice too. Oh, all right. Oh, and maybe man. one triangle, one air horn. <laughs> you know, we'll see which one up, works. Juxtaposition. <laughs> um, this week we are super excited to have Dave Joseph on the podcast. Thanks for joining us, Dave. Oh yeah, of course. Uh, huge fan. Um, happy to be here. Yeah. Yeah, Dave Joseph has been listener day one. Uh, yeah, probably. Probably, yeah. maybe. I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> it sounds good. It sounds good. Um, but also. You are a, a very accomplished industrial designer. You've worked for several companies, including Minimal. Um, uh, you worked for like a uh, water bottle brand. And Contigo, not just a water bottle brand. Well, I think the several. water the... bottle brand. Yeah, there, well, there's so there's a couple brands underneath the one company that we're uh, for. Okay. Yeah. yeah, so there's Contigo, Avex, Bubba, and a brand called Bueno that kind of came and went pretty quick. But, oh, interesting. Yeah. <laughs> well, but no the, Bueno. No, <laughs> it no was bueno. no Bueno. <laughs> well, we'll have to touch on that a little bit yeah. in a second. Um, but currently, you are working at a startup that you founded. Yeah. So that's really exciting, and we'll definitely want to talk about that. But um, yeah, I, th- we like to start off every podcast with just hearing a little bit about like your your upbringing. Yeah. So Where, where were you born, and how would you get into design? Yeah, no, I'd happy to share that story. Um, so I, I was born and raised in the suburbs outside Chicago. Um, the uh, I, I was born into a family. Uh, my father's an architect and my mother is a photographer, portrait artist, and uh, co-owner of a manufacturing company. Oh, <clears throat> wait, what kind of manufacturing? Uh, it's industrial packaging, actually. Okay, cool. Um, yeah. Wait, what is industrial packaging? Cardboard? Uh, It's actually uh, injection molded uh, reusable packaging for Hmm. like industry. Oh, so like. like, So think like pallets. Yes. That are custom formed for the things that they're holding so they can uh, they can take, you know, impact in a crash. Right. And the product that's on them isn't damaged. And then they're reused so they can be shipped back. And then, you know, it's like for inter inter country or interstate factory right stuff basically okay no that's cool yeah. that's cool and that's a company that my great grandfather started and my grandfather ran and then my mom now runs and i'm kind of like a co co-runner of that company too <laughs> have you designed anything for this company i haven't yet okay but uh kind of, it reminds me of your, your dad's yeah. company a little yeah. Bit. yeah so we don't do so we no longer have like the presses and the the, the molding ourselves we're mm-hmm. just on the engineering side of it right now gotcha. engineering okay. sales you know marketing side um but we use you know um u.s manufacturers for everything yeah. and and the companies that we sell to are u.s companies like I, I can't really get into like the naming names of people <laughs> Do we all have to sign ndas <laughs> yeah uh so everyone get out your pen <laughs> <laughs> we'll put a link in the description of the episode. Yeah, right. <laughs> uh, um, but yeah, so that's it's it's kind of like this this thing that I've that's been in my blood. Yeah, like w- you've heard the f- expression like "born with a silver spoon in your mouth." Mm. We in my family we like to say you're born with a plastic spoon in your mouth <laughs> because plastics plastic injection molding has been like you know in our family for well. You were telling us when you were three years old you were operating the injection molding. That's machine. right. Yeah. No. Yeah. <laughs> totally. I'm joking. I'm joking. <laughs> Um, yeah, so very, so that was like my upbringing, super artistic family. I went to Montessori school up, oh, in, nice. you know, up until I was, uh, in grade school. So that was just like preschool, kindergarten. Yeah. But for those, for those people who might not know what Montessori school is, could you describe that? Um, I'll do my best. Yeah. Um, I'm not an expert on it, but it's basically, uh, an educational, it's a method of education where, the student, in this case, the toddler, gets to choose their activities mm. um, and sort of structure their own day. So you, instead of being told, like, in a classroom of 15 toddlers in kindergarten, like, okay, everyone sit down and take out the glue. We're going to s- glue. You. And everyone does the same thing. Right. right. Um, there's activities. There's tons of activities activities in the room, and the, and the kids get to 
uh, choose their activity, take it to an area, do it, clean up from it, put it back. And so it's like self-directed education. Kind Interesting. Of. Yeah. And it actually, it's, it's a, it's a style of education that can go all the way through, uh, you know, high school, but it's very rare to find like a high school, a Montessori high school. Yeah. Okay. I'm so glad you defined that because I was thinking monastery. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> that's definitely not the same no, no, thing. No, no, no. You take a vow of celibacy <laughs> at six years old. Yeah. It's very, I appreciate, it was very I important to you. <laughs> I appreciate you hanging in there for the for the uh, <laughs> listeners, James. <laughs> yeah. Um. So that was yeah. So that's kind of like just to give a little flavor on my family. Yeah. Um. Uh, when I, so I always like the, like the origin story of like the superhero origin story for industrial. Were designers. you bitten by a radioactive industrial designer? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so, uh, so I was, my, I just so happens that my, the Montessori school that I went to, um, there was a family there that my mom became good friends with the, you know, the kid's mom that was there. So it was like family friends. And we be, we stayed close all the way through, you know, through today. And the f- it was, like, super close. So I considered the mom and dad my aunt and uncle. Um, we would go over there all the time for holidays. And I was over there. We were all over there for Thanksgiving when I was, like, a sophomore in high school. Mm. And my, uh, my, my uncle, he wasn't actually my uncle, but my step-uncle or whatever you call that kind of guy, uh, at the dinner table, I was like, so, Dave, you're a sophomore. What are you thinking about doing for school? And I was like, well, I like playing with Legos, and I like drawing, and I don't, <laughs> I don't want to be an architect, because my dad was an architect, and yeah. no offense, you know, dad, but... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Does your dad listen to the pod? Uh, he probably will listen to this one, because oh, I'll tell sweet. him about it. <laughs> uh, yeah, so he... Anyway, so I said, I, you know, I want to do these things. I basically said, like... That's that's the story I tell now. I don't know what I actually said, but it was just, it was along the lines of like I want to do something creative. Uh, I like building things. I like art. You know, I was really into art at the time. And he's like, "Oh, let me show you my studio." So he brought me down to uh, his studio in the basement, and it just so turned. It just so happens that my family friend was Bill Lee, who is the vice president at uh, HLB, which Herbs Our Bell is was a huge. Um, design student in Chicago. Like mm, okay. it's sort of like dwindled in the last decade, but yeah. back at the time it was the, you know, it was like continuum in Boston or like, uh, you know, PD, any other, like the big studios yeah, in, right. in, in, yeah. the, in the country. And he was like, this is industrial design. Wow. And he's showing me like prototypes and drawings. Wow. And I'm like, Oh my God, this is exactly <laughs> what I want to do. <laughs> this That's is like, awesome. you get to play all the time. So, um yeah so i was like that's what i want to do so i kind of knew from like sophomore year in high school that i want to be an industrial designer and that's awesome uh, set my sights on it and i i my my i'm not a very good artist my portfolio at the time was terrible i didn't have a portfolio but he's like you got to have a art portfolio to get into an art school because that's where you study industrial design yeah so i started taking um art classes like outside of my high school like at the community college that is by my house. So uh, that was, there's some funny stories about like life drawing classes when oh. he, as a junior <laughs> in high are, school. <laughs> those are always funny stories. Yeah. Right? Oh man. My mom signed me up for a life drawing class in high school because I think the art teacher recommended it. Yeah. And I was like, cool. You know, like <laughs> this will be cool. And it was like the same dude every week. Oh, it's like they couldn't find a female model. It was just, <laughs> they're just, Oh man. And and it would always be like I would like gloss over that area and the guy <laughs> teaching the class would be like, I want you to develop that area <laughs> a little bit more. <laughs> oh no. Come on, man. <laughs> oh man. Yeah. So anyway, that's I know funny. what that's like. Yeah. So my first day in my so I took a bunch of classes there, sculpture, pottery and stuff, but my yeah. life drawing class, my first day, it's like my first college class super nervous i show up really early and i'm standing around the classroom with all my supplies and there's this older woman there and uh you, you know i'm talking to her and i'm like yeah it's my first day i'm really nervous and yeah and she was just like oh it'll be fine you know you, this is great like everyone here is cool 
And uh, I'm like, thank you. Like, so I like connected with this person, right? You guys know where the story is yeah. going. <laughs> Everyone else comes into the classroom and the teacher's like, and I, by the way, thought life drawing was like, draw objects, like right. fruit. Still life. Still <laughs> yeah. life. Still life. Yeah. yeah. I had no idea what I was walking into. So <laughs> yeah. Anyways, everyone else comes in. The teacher says whatever. Welcome to class. And then the person that I like had basically moored my whole like future to just gets undressed in front of me. And I'm like, what's happening? <laughs> <laughs> it was terrifying. Oh man. Yeah. That's incredible. Wow. <laughs> yeah. Did you say anything after it was all done? No, I just no, you just, <laughs> just left. <laughs> just walked away. I think that was the right decision. <laughs> <laughs> no, it was it was cool though. Yeah. So so Dave, you were taking some of these college classes and then you went to my ad, is that correct? Yeah, I actually did I uh, did two years at University of Michigan. Okay. Mm. Uh, and then they canceled the industrial design program at the University of Michigan. Yeah. And Wow. Yeah. Was, I won't even go into that because it's a really long story. Uh, but I ended up transferring to my ad. Okay. Um, <clears throat> and spent did three years there. Um, awesome program. Love the teachers there. Very like hands on program a lot of shop classes i say it's like uh, half like physical model building form development in the physical space and then half of it was like drawing and cad and research and you know the other soft side of of design mm -hmm. really great program yeah and uh so after i i so i did an internship while i was at my ad called at a uh, milwaukee tool so I did like a summer internship there, which spilled over into the fall. And I kind of just did like part-time work while I was in school. Um, great experience. Learned how to use a Cintiq at, at Milwaukee Tool. Wow. Which was, uh, you know, a big deal for me. You know, because yeah. like that was back in the day. Where there wasn't a lot of like digital drawing and Cintiqs. I yeah. think our school, I think Maya had like one Cintiq. Oh, wow. So you, okay. like, could take a turn using it, you know, <laughs> but you're so nervous and everyone's watching. It's like... <laughs> um, yeah, and then somebody gets undressed and you're yeah. like, I'm not... <laughs> Wait, where am I? Exactly. Uh, when I graduated, I, I, I had a, a professional internship, uh, which is, like, you know, your first job if, if you're nervous about having a first job or something, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I worked at a, a studio in Boston called Essential. Okay. Um, I worked there for the fall of 2008, and then the economy crashed, and they they laid off a bunch of people, and mm. I was like the first one to go. They were like, "We just you're just an intern, and we just hired you." <laughs> <Yeah>. So, <laughs> uh, which was a bummer. But I met some really cool people there um, yeah. that I you still in contact with now. Um, and it, at that point is when I started working for this company called UICO, uh, which was this basically a startup that was the co-founder was my friend Bill Lee, the guy that introduced me to industrial design. Right. Mm. Okay. Like back when I was a kid, um, you know, and so he had started this startup doing durable touchscreen interfaces for like industrial applications. So oil rigs, um, wow. medical devices, Things where like a typical iPhone screen is not good enough. So okay. yeah. like really cold, cold situations, wet situations, acidic situations, things mm. like that. Wow. Where the technology that's in a typical iPhone or iPad doesn't work. Right. It's outside the range. Uh, the company still exists. It does well. They do a lot of stuff in the, you know, industrial it's, interface. It's kind of interesting. You never really hear about the industrial industrial design yeah <laughs> you know i mean we hear about the consumer sided part of design right. a lot you know designing dog toys or whatever it is but uh you know you never hear about like the people have to design things that go into factories or like right. go into like big rigs or like you know airplanes you know like yeah those things need to be designed by industrial designers too yeah yeah, like, yeah and it's, did you enjoy that aspect or no it was interesting like i i learned a lot about that's where i sort of figured out the first concept around like oh, th these products are being like actually built right like so we had a factory in the back i worked in the office in the front of the factory where we, they built the touch screens in the back that's awesome and uh it was really cool and so i would work on a project that would eventually end up being produced in the factory 
which is really cool. Um, it wasn't, there was no styling to anything, right? right. It was all like utilitarian, very okay. utility, very utilitarian. Um, but I learned about like precision and accuracy mm. and like in, not only in like, I mean, if you're using CAD, everything's precise, right? Right. I forget the difference between precision and accuracy. I know people make a big deal about so that. So don't ask us that. <laughs> yeah. I have no clue. Like, accuracy is like, oh, God, I'm going to mess this up. Someone's going to not be happy about this. <laughs> one of them, I'll just say one of them is like uh, like a, a small grouping. Like, everything right. is near each other. And yeah. another thing is like, those that grouping is in the right place. I feel like that's... I feel like accuracy is the grouping, right? And precision is the location I don't know. of it. I'll take on the trolls. Okay. Oh, no. Yeah. oh no, I already yeah. see the emails coming in. <laughs> <laughs> you guys don't know. Anything. You idiots. <laughs> uh, yeah. So one of the cool things we did there was uh, we we built and we built a testing rig to test the durability of these laminated pieces of glass. So we would take like like really thin glass, like 0.3 millimeter thick glass, like so thin you could like right. bend it, right? Yeah. And then they had this device, the machine in the back that could lay like a really thin piece of uh, adhesive down. And then they'd put the the PTE substrate, which was like the actual touch screen, the capacitive sensor. And then they'd put down another piece of adhesive and then another piece of glass. And the thickness and the position and the layering of all those things – would determine like how durable it was like how mm. hard you could hit it hmm. so we built a a rig that we would drop a like a steel ball it was like a ball <laughs> bearing about that big and it had to be dropped from like the same height every time yeah and you had to like have no hesitation so we built like a mechanism to do the dropping and at different heights and then hold the glass in the place and then we just like i remember like one week me and um my well he was my boss time now he's my friend uh spent like the whole week all night long like drinking whiskey back there <laughs> just <laughs> dropping dropping balls dropping balls <laughs> on glass <laughs> just because like you had we had to get like a certain amount of breaks or not breaks in order to like determine the statistic significance of the test right right you can't you can't just like Try it once and be like, well, it didn't break, so we're good. You yeah. know, you have to do it like a thousand times to say that it won't break under these certain circumstances. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah, it seems like this is more of an engineer focused job. Was yeah. Your, what was your title there, designer? Or was it? Yeah, something else? it was. I mean, it was like I got like saved by my friend, my, my mentor. Okay. You know, so uh, this was kind of in that transition after the. Yeah, when it's when the market collapsed. Yeah, when I got laid okay. off at Essential. My, you know, family friend was like, you can come work for me. I like, got it. I got it. You yeah. don't know what you're doing. Like, I was just, <laughs> I was four months out of school, That's you know? Right. Okay. So he's like, just whatever. Like, yeah. you know, I, actually, it's funny. I did some things. I did some uh, graphic interface stuff for, they, UICO built a control module for the McCafe machine. Like back when McDonald's first had like, the blended coffee drinks, okay, mm. yeah, yeah, and the smoothies, uh, the the control device that made like so the users could punch, not the consumer, but the people behind the counter right. could like punch in like he wants a frappuccino, whatever, like the buttons that those people would click on were like my design buttons, oh, okay. and I looked at them recently. I'm like, uh, <laughs> like skeuomorphism <laughs> up. Up the wazoo. It was so... <laughs> that was prime time. Yeah. It was like deep in the whole like... Everything was pillowed. And <laughs> like oh, so yeah. Bad. Oh, man. Like glossy. Everything had like a little gloss like highlight across yeah. the top of Those it. Those are going to come back in yeah. what? You know, it's a 20 years? Yeah. Thir- 30 year cycle. 30 yeah. Year. So... What, 20, 20, 40, yeah. 2040 skew morphism. All right. People are going to be like... Be showing these buttons in but their classes. Well, and it's under the... <laughs> look at this. Skew morphism is coming back in VR. Like, oh, right. Yeah. You know, my VR house is a real house. That is skew morphism. Um, but it's, yeah, it's a little bit different. Yeah. It's interesting. Yeah. So, but so, it serves the same purpose, right? It's like to to tran- transition to yeah. transition you into understanding the new interface. Exactly. One of the things, total sidebar. Let's do it. Uh, but I, I'm getting tired of just like telling my life story. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, one of the things we're doing with Ovi, 
just jump way ahead, right? right. Obi's my startup. Current startup. Uh, it's, we're developing a food storage system that reminds you to eat your food. We'll get into that. But I just wanted to say, like, one of the things that we're doing is working with Alexa. So we're building voice interface uh. um, on the Alexa platform and the Google platform. So does Alexa tell you to eat your, eat your food? She can remind you to eat and what to eat based on the things that you have saved. Cool. But we're using it. The the primary use case for it is you tell Alexa what it is you're saving. So when you tag oh. a f- piece of food, you don't have to open your phone and say, like, this was lasagna. You just hit the button, throw it in the fridge, and you say, Alexa, tell Obi that's lasagna. Oh. That's uh, cool. It is, yeah. yeah. So that's a new, that's another interface that doesn't have, like, a... We need like a voice skeuomorphism to get you to understand how to use Alexa. Because yeah. if anyone has an Alexa, I would love to. Well, I know some of the statistics, but just from this community, like if you have an Alexa, do you use it for anything other than playing music, like making a list, or like ask, reminding you to do something? I a use, timer. Yeah, a timer. Timer is timer. okay. the big one and because we always use it when we're cooking. Smart lights. Yes, yeah, we have we have it for smart lights as well. Yeah, I don't have Alexa. Yeah. I have Siri. But <clears throat> yeah, there's there are there are like thousands of applications that are built for Alexa that are on the Alexa store. Yeah, that like nobody, nobody uses. uses. Yeah, not yet, not yet. <laughs> yeah. So I'm just curious. And so I I have a theory that I think that we've sort of like built OV under this theory that I think you need a physical like representation Mm. a piece of hardware that bridges you into the alexa world basically so you're saying that skeuomorphism for voice is actually a physical object it's hardware it's iot interesting Mm. yeah huh yeah so imagine like um so in our case we have these smart tags they're like these little buttons without the button like you just put the food in the fridge and like you'll forget like people will forget to tell alexa that what they're saving right Right. but by having the button on there it does other things like it has some sensors in it but i think the key like psychological function of the button is just to be a reminder to tell alexa what it is you're saving yeah that's Um, that's cool that's very interesting because yeah i do feel like there's this maybe there's a push to kind of eliminate hardware in our lives and and physical things Mm-hmm. Um, especially within tech. And I feel like I just don't see physical things going away. Like we started out like not, the, way not yet. That, the way that we evolved, the way that we evolved was through tools, right? Yeah. Like that was one of the major advancements that like humans did to be humans is, is the utilization of tools. And I feel like that tactility is going to be really difficult to give up. Well, just wait till we upload our brains, James. <laughs> but then, but then like, it's just a different version of tactility. Right. So, so right. That's like, true. You'll Someone up, will have to design the digital things that we're using. Right? We'll, yeah. we'll still be, it will be experiencing them as tactile. Yeah. Even like great VR, you're experiencing as tactile. Yeah. Um, you're experiencing an actual thing. The, the the simplest way to put it is like a GUI, like a graphic user interface, is essentially like a list of options. Mm. Like we see it as like a gr- you know grid in on the iOS and folders and menus on right uh, you know a laptop or a computer, but it's <clears throat> it's essentially helps you work through what you want to do next. Right? right when you're just staring at a coffee can on the counter. There's like nothing to say what to do next. Yeah. You just sort of like, you're given like an unlimited sea of options and you kind of just, there's, you know, a lot of people just don't know what to do. Yeah. And anyways. <laughs> I love the, I, I, there's, there's a lot to unpack there. And yeah. this is the coolest part about what I'm doing right now is like, is building products from like the 10,000 foot view, not yeah. just like cool surfacing but like right. right ecosystem you know logic and yeah. things like that i mean you're thinking like way into the psychology of people using and storing food and things like that it's very cool um and 
yeah, should, it's we cool. Kinda, we gotta jump ahead. Should we? All right, let me should just, we go back? Just I'll we, just we can get back to Ovi really quickly. I feel like we just need to kind of. I'll just be really quick about like the other things <laughs> I did in my life. <laughs> I was going too deep. I think on all my. I, I do want to talk no, about the startup. I, I feel I like mean, this is like this is definitely something we want to talk right, about. Yeah, and I, and I welcome a good tangent because that that's what that was. Yeah. But we gotta we gotta know we gotta okay, know more. So, so the guy that. So when I was working at UICO, dropping the balls, yeah, the guy I was drinking whiskey with, dropping balls, was <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna I'm gonna cut that part out and just put that in my story. <laughs> Please, <laughs> okay, okay, all right. So uh, that was a guy named Paul Hurley, mm-hmm. and Paul ended up leaving UICO to work at Ignite, mm-hmm. which is the company that owned Contigo, and. Very quickly after that, he just sort of like brought me along with him. So at the time, so I worked at Contigo, Ignite, Ignite owned Contigo and Avex and a couple other brands of uh, drinkware. Am I wrong in thinking that Contigo was founded by Sam Farber, who also founded OXO? Or uh, I believe so. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Answered like a true Jeopardy contestant. Uh, that's correct. <laughs> No, uh, I I don't I don't know. I I could misspeak about the founding yeah. people. I was there. I was the twenty sixth, twenty seventh employee. Oh wow! Um, so it was small at the time. Yeah. But there was a sort of phase of people that had been there and then left. Yeah, maybe he was just an executive there, but I remember he had some connection to Contigo. Yeah. yeah. There's a lot of people that left Contigo to do cool things, so yeah. I wouldn't be surprised if that was the case. Yeah. Um. So what was it about Contigo that that spawn such great creators i don't know i mean w- w- i mean this is just water bottles right or it is just water just water, drink water bottles so I mean, i'm sure you did some amazing. the source of life i mean I'm sure you did some amazing you should probably pull something up on yes. contigo since people are going to be curious uh, and you have the whole thing set up Dave. see this is how i this is how i feel Dave. about <laughs> just water dave is an active uh active viewer of the youtube yeah. do you usually watch the youtube uh i you said that, and then you asked me if I do. <laughs> I don't watch the YouTube. I can't. Um, I'm. I could, but I. Yeah. I'm more of a listener. So if you look at the, so basically the the core technology, it's like super high tech, quote unquote, water bottles. Okay. There's no like electronics in it, but they're mechanically um, involved, basically. Yeah. Um, Are there any? Uh, yeah. So down. Oh, drinkware portfolio. Yeah. So if you, this is all my ignite contigo stuff yeah oh did you want me to click on another one no that's fine so basically there's these the heart of each water bottle is like a mechanism so there's like buttons and levers and latches right these have like little flip up straws that we're looking at right now or like that one with the big red button on it when you hold that button down it opens the seal so you can drink and then when you let go of the button it automatically seals the lid okay so it's like imagine Yes, these are high tech water bottles. Yeah, okay. yeah, and not all of them are, but like this is the flagship. Yeah, flagship. I just read. Yeah. That. So uh-huh. West Loop is sort of is where Ignite was born in the West Loop of Chicago. It's the neighborhood, and West Loop is their, you know, best selling product. It's a coffee mug, um, and it pretty much made the name for yeah for Contigo. And I worked on this, which was the genera- like the next generation. I see these West all Loop. over the place. It's really nice. I mean, and and I have to say, like the the f- the fit finish on these, just it. I have never owned a Contigo bottle, but they've always struck me as as really nicely done. You know, in terms of that mm-hmm. s- final CMF phase and just getting everything to fit together. And if you jump back or look at the um, the other brand was Avex, so that one with the green and the blue right there uh, to the left. Yeah, nope. Down, uh, up, up, left, up. <laughs> Bingo. <laughs> so this is a product for Avex, which oh. was which was the like athletic brand. So if yeah. Contigo was like our housewares. Okay. Avex was our athletic. This has a little bit more of an aggressive feel to oh, it. Oh yeah, yeah. We, we were you know inspired by you know North Face and yeah. camping equipment and uh, essentially at the car- heart of it, it's a, it has the same technology. Like you hold right. on the button, it opens it. You let go. And, um, and Dave, were you doing these renderings? 
Are these are these yours? Because I I mean I have to give you a lot of credit. I've seen your work, you know, on your Instagram and also on Render Weekly. Like, you do some great rendering work. I think that's... was is that where this all started? Or yeah, actually, like so, my work at Contigo was where actually I got my first seat of key shot. It was called Hyper Shot back then right. mm-hmm. when I was at my ad. But I really pushed myself when I was at Contigo. Yeah, uh, yeah, and... these are really nice renderings. Thank you. Yeah. Um, and the, I, I sort of, I actually started teaching a class to the people that we hired at Contigo. Wow. And uh, Contigo was eventually bought by Newell, Newell Brands. Yeah, yeah. And that's when I decided to, to leave and go find other greener pastures. But one of the last things I did was teach the, the Newell designers, or not all of them. I'm sure some of them are, didn't need my education. Did you teach Ricky Biddle? I don't know. I don't want to say if I did or not. I don't remember. But I taught a, a workshop at the the Kalamazoo studio of like my key shot technique. And yeah. it was it like at the time it was very much about like speed. So I had like one environment that I always used. Oh, I cr- like I all my materials were like super simple and I just cranked the I the IOR. Yeah, the index refraction like super high to get like very defined shadows and highlights. Yeah. It was all about like defining form right. yeah. in your rendering because we weren't using like these never saw like consumer the consumers never saw these. Mm. These were all about like having a meeting in uh like a design meet a design studio meeting or with like to get buy in from sales right. or marketing right. yeah. and then used to sell the product into retailers. Yeah. Mm. So it was all like how do you like best leverage key shot to give you like hyper precision in describing the form, not super realism. Yeah. Does that make sense? That's w- awesome. I would love to sit in on that <laughs> workshop. James, don't pull up key shot. I know. No, don't click it. Don't click it. Dave, so, uh, so this first, scene. The podcast is crashing. The podcast is crashing. <laughs> um, yeah, that's actually where I first, I believe that's when I first connected with you, Dave, is when you did the uh, render weekly of when I did the collab with Render Weekly of my mm. chairs, mm. you had done, you had 3D modeled and rendered out one of my chair sketches. That's right, yeah. And it was freaking amazing. <laughs> it was one of like the, it was like orange and plastic mold. It was just beautiful. Yeah, that one's on my website. Yeah, yeah. That was I, I loved doing that one because I love the the Eames style yeah. of furniture, and it's like I have a similar chair in my house, and I was like, oh yeah, like <laughs> this is gonna be <laughs> there cool. There it is. Yeah. And that so the render weekly is like my my bread and butter CAD software is SolidWorks, and I've been I wanted a tool to learn Fusion because I think Fusion is an awesome piece of software and I love T splines I I never done any free form modeling it always been parametric like mm. like projecting planes right. like setting up sketches to make planes like everything like I I prided myself on like like. I could take any note from somebody. Like if I had like built the whole model, like that water bottle, the super like aggressive one, yeah. someone could come in and be like, can you change the thickness of that? Like that rib there. And I'd be like, no problem. <laughs> like, <laughs> and, it, and then it all be fine. And the whole model would update. And I'd be like, yes, that is really beautiful. <laughs> and then it would explode. And you'd be like, I don't, I don't know what's wrong. Uh, I need yeah. another month. <laughs> yeah, but I loved building models that could like withstand yeah. changes. Yeah. And I got, that is satisfying for yeah. sure. Oh yeah. Uh, but I I wanted to challenge myself to learn like T splines basically because it was in a package that was free, so I could just get it. And anyways, so I I used I've been using Render Weekly to sort of like teach mm-hmm. myself T splines. So like all the stuff that I've been doing in Render Weekly is all based in T splines. I mean, besides like the obvious stuff, right. that's mm-hmm. like extrudes and stuff. That's cool. All all in Fusion three hundred and sixty. All in Fusion and most everything in in t spines yeah so like was, this whole that whole chair surface was all done right in that was something that you brought up at byu the like the idea that the best way to learn a program is to to like create a project around it yeah you know a new piece of software so that's really interesting i i've never thought of that approach but it makes so much sense it doesn't even have to be a big project either just yeah. just the render weekly stuff yeah. Like yeah you were doing yeah that's cool um yeah, that's that's awesome, Dave. the The water bottle thing was good, and then yeah, so I left Ign- I left Ignite when Newell, not when it happened, but soon after Newell okay. purchased us, mm. and um, 
and then went and worked for Scott Wilson at Minimal yeah. slash Lunatic. Okay. Let's not minimize that. That's Scott pretty exciting. Wilson. Scott Wilson. <laughs> I mean, Minimal is a really cool studio. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, well, I, I, I tend to sort of like do this weird thing because technically I worked for Lunatic, which mm. was the brand that Minimal owned. Okay. Um, then, but that's like the, you were a part of Scott Wilson's Avengers. Like that. That's like you were. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You I, were. You were like a Harlem Glo- Globetrotter <laughs> for for minimal. I don't know. Yeah. It, it it felt it felt like I was. Well, first of all, I, like everyone at the studio was like super. Like didn't treat me like I wasn't part of the studio. Right. And I worked on some minimal projects, like just studio projects that would come through. But yeah. I wasn't on the roster of like. Hey, we got a new client. Like, get Dave on it. I like, see. It was I would do lunatic projects, but I was in the minimal office, and I I just want to make that clear in case any minimal people are listening, because I don't want to like act like I was <laughs> like yeah, whatever. So, well, so well, this this kind yeah. of stuff. Yeah, lunatic is they do phone accessories, watch accessories. I don't know. Maybe you can explain a little yeah, better. Yeah. So, Dave, but we're lunatic look, we're looking was, at like an Apple Watch uh, case right now. Yeah, Lunatic was a brand that Scott launched on Kickstarter in 2005. I want to say. Yeah. And it was like that way back in the day. Remember the original? Not the original. One of the iPod Nanos that was like the little oh, yeah, square. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm doing uh-huh. this, but like it was just a little square with a clip. <laughs> and Scott had the idea of like, what if you could attach that to your wrist? And so he launched this thing on Kickstarter that was like just aluminum housings that it went viral. Held. I believe it went viral. Yeah, and it, from it, what I can remember, he raised a million dollars on Kickstarter. Yeah. It was the first million dollar Kickstarter, and it yeah. it launched the Lunatic brand. It's called TikTok, I think. Yeah, Is it, that, that's the that's one. it, right? Yeah, well, that's got a, a aluminum band, but essentially that's the one. Yeah, yeah. And at, funny story, we met some Apple designers. When when I was showing Ovi at CES two years ago, we met some Apple designers that were like that had actually used Scott's. So Scott's involved with Ovi too. Yeah. Side sidebar, but so the Apple designers were like, we used your TikTok bands with fake iPod Nanos to prototype the actual Apple Watch. Wow. <laughs> so like they would they were walking around with Apple Watch OS on like iPod Nanos with Scott's TikTok bands. That's crazy. That's amazing. Yeah. That yeah. was kind of a I was like happy for him. It wasn't my I mean I didn't do it but I was like right. that's pretty cool, man. <laughs> yeah. No, I re- I remember I remember this and I remember I mean uh, if you've been listening to the podcast, you like you might have heard my story about reaching out to Scott Wilson on LinkedIn. My oh, no. my ill fated, it was it was bad. I I just I sent him a message on LinkedIn. I asked somebody who was a mutual <laughs> connection to uh, quote unquote introduce us on LinkedIn, yeah. and then realized that, that I hadn't happen? updated my LinkedIn oh, in like no. two years, <laughs> oh, no. and it was like I was still in school and like <laughs> oh, all God. this. Yeah, it was terrible. Oh man! Um, but I I really admired Scott a lot for what he was doing in terms of not only having the the design practice, like the consultancy practice, but also doing these entrepreneurial ventures. Yeah, and it's. It is really cool that how he splits yeah. like his efforts like that. It's, yeah, he's a really interesting person. I've become friends with him over over the years of, of working with him and just hanging out. Yeah, and he his approach to design is like very practical, very but very creative. Mm. He he's he's runs like multiple companies and as well as his own studio, and he's still like jumps in CAD like for a regular client. <laughs> wow. Like, <laughs> yeah. like he worked at IDEO, didn't he? He worked at IDEO. He was he was at Nike for a yeah. bit in their wearables. He was right. at, at Motorola wearables for a bit. Yeah. Uh that's interesting. Yeah. And then he just and then he went and built minimal. Yeah. And uh so so then amidst all of all this that you were working on the Lunatic brand, I mean when did Ovi come up? Was that was that your idea? And then you brought it to Scott to be like, "This is something that I really want to work on." Or well, how did that? How did it that was happen? kind of like that? Except my my co founder uh, Ty Thompson, mm-hmm. uh, who's actually worked at Contigo in sales, uh, sales and business development at Contigo. 
So is he the business guy? He's the business guy. Okay. Yeah. Uh, every good f- startup should have a business guy. Like, don't <laughs> try it's to important. do a startup without a business guy. <laughs> <laughs> Especially if you're like anywhere on the. I was gonna say the spectrum, but like I meant like the spectrum of creativity, okay, but yeah, maybe okay. also that spectrum. I don't know. Like I, I'll speak for myself. Use my I statements. <laughs> but uh, yeah. Um, anyways, so Ty had the initial idea. He's like, "What if he was in a parking garage?" Um, and you could pull up the OV site now to give some people some context. Yeah. Uh, this would be a good time to jump on the the YouTube or look up OV dot life. Uh, is our website so the the initial idea was ty was in a parking garage that has those leds above each parking spot mm. oh, you've been in one of those one of the fancy ones yeah, yeah yeah and it's like you pull in and you just go like are there any spots here oh there's a spot and right, you just go you drive see, right because they're out, like on the ceiling so you yeah. can see them far away it's like oh there's a green light you don't That's... have to go wander around oh, looking for an open spot i have not been in one of those oh That's yeah it's amazing it's you've been in so you've been in nice. new york too long yeah i know yeah, you need to go in the suburbs <laughs> of chicago That's where they all are. Yeah. They had him in Texas too. Yeah, so you basically, he was like, "This is awesome. What else could you put this on? Like, yeah. what else could an LED indicator help you with?" Mm. And he was had probably the day before thrown away this like risotto dish that him and his wife make that they love eating the leftovers of, but they forgot about it. Oh. They made it, they ate ate it that night, and they always make extra for leftovers, and this time they forgot to eat it. Yeah. So they'd thrown it away, and then he'd been in this parking garage, and sort of like, poof, those two things came together, and he's like, what if you could put a light on a food container that reminds you to eat it? Mm. So he came to me with that when, um, because we, we were friends working at Contigo. Right. And he's like, I he he's just a business guy, you know, sales guy. So he, though very creative, he's like, I don't know how to get this out of my head. Right? Like, yeah, you're great at getting things on paper, or you know, making things happen. So uh, we decided to partner on the whole thing and just started working on it. We we moon we were doing it like nights and weekends for two years. Okay. Oh wow. And making no progress. You know. <laughs> what do you, What do you mean? <laughs> Well, I mean, yeah, no progress. But like, what do you mean by no progress? Were you not? So we we were like not getting uh, funding, or like you weren't figuring out the mechanics of it. Well, or? we we didn't have the time to like. I shouldn't say that. So we worked like it was actually one year that we actually put towards it before we really like started making progress. Okay. Yeah. Um, and in that year, we patented the concept. So we had to like we had to write out the concept. Pat- patent pending or full patent? Patent pending. Well, okay. I mean, we we filed the patent right. for it. Uh, so it took us time to just come up with how do you say what we want to do. Mm. So writing that down, working with the law firm, uh, the the attorneys to write the patent. It just was like. Every email took another two weeks. Like yeah, you send an email two weeks later, right? Right. You get to the email, you little, respond. I understand. That. It just takes forever, right. like because we had full time jobs, so uh, we just sort of pushed, just slowly kicked it along the road. Okay. Not really actually like trying to build it. It was more like let's patent it, let's talk to some people and see if they think it's a good idea. Maybe mm. find some partners or something like okay. that. Okay. And then when I was working. When I was working at Lunatic, um, it was always sort of a deadline for the end of my time at Lunatic because Scott was like selling off the the last share of Lunatic uh, uh. from Minimal. So I was I was basically there helping him do that. Like I was there to help him like finalize all the design work and ship it off and be his like design vision for the end of the life of interesting Lunatic. okay gotcha so as that was coming to an end i was like hey you know i've got this thing or this idea i want to pursue it um and he's like that's really cool so he just let me kept keep a seat at minimal so i just had like i kept my desk at minimal and i started doing some contract work just to pay the bills and work on ovi and scott just couldn't like he just every night he would be at my desk like brainstorming ideas for like how to solve this that's how awesome. do we get the button to work that like so cool. that's really cool yeah. so we we he just like made himself a part of it <laughs> through brute force <laughs> <laughs> like he gave you a desk i feel like he had, yeah. had a little bit of a stake <laughs> yeah i mean like yeah he was 
and he connected us to people right. like so eventually i mean i i don't want to get too detailed on like the structure of our company but we ended up giving him a percentage of the company because of his you right. know the efforts he'd done and yeah. just how much he'd helped us and and connected us into the we it's like with with being connected to scott and the connections he had put us on third base basically right because yeah. because i assume from there having connections with scott wilson from minimal you probably were able to connect with people like vc venture capital and yeah so get some funding yeah, yeah vc is is a different thing but like angel okay. like at the stage mm-hmm. we were at it was all like angel investors and so there's a huge angel network in chicago so he connected us into that and uh, you know he connected to a few people and then connections meet beget connections yeah beget right. connections. angel right. investors they put in money but expect nothing in return is that is that well, correct uh, that I is mean, correct is that <laughs> that's pretty much how it works but yeah <laughs> so well, vcs vcs have like it's like a business right so like they have to answer for their decisions uh angels are just typically individuals that like are wealthy individuals that want to put money into something and yes they nev- they don't expect anything in return but uh, i mean they would love like they they don't like just throw money at you right but they if if they invest in 10 things and none of them come through like it's fine for yeah. them hmm. whereas vcs like they i don't not, i don't think like every vc firm has a board that re- you know, requires results, but they like, it's a structured business that's trying to get results. Interesting. Yeah. Right. Yeah, yeah. And an angel is just like a rich dude right. that has money that likes, is you know, <laughs> Daddy wants to Warbucks. Get and he like, he, the angel is like trying to make his money work for him. Right. And investing yeah. it in companies instead of the stock market. But well, I mean, if you invest in 20 companies and they all, all 20 of them fail or maybe the 21st, succeeds your return on investment is is like a hundred times 100 x yeah because you're you're the first one to put in mm. put in the money yeah gotcha i've been listening to the startup podcast have you listened to that podcast yeah yeah it's good Dave, i'm trying to make it was, this i actually had to stop listening to it because it was too close to home oh. <laughs> i was like this is like a year ago i was like nope i'm done it's too it's i mean too i'm kind of i, I kind of want to get into that the startup lifestyle i mean dave you're the first guest that we've had that's you know, very into the startup life right now. I mean, I don't. Maybe you're the only one that's had a startup per se. Mm. I mean, you got this funding from from your connections with Scott Wilson. Like, did it kind of ramp up from there? Yeah. So we we. So I don't want to like. There were a lot of other people that helped us mm-hmm. other than Scott. Scott sort of started the ball rolling for us. Right. Yeah. But um, we w- friends, family, like. Right. I think every, not every family member of mine, but a lot of my family members are invested. A lot of my partner's family members are invested. Yeah. Uh, a lot of our friends have put money in. And then angel investors on top of that. We're st- actually still in the middle of raising money, like for the, the round we're in right now. Cool. Uh, so if, if you have any money, <laughs> uh, <laughs> hit me up. <laughs> I'd be interested. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So you have to be an accredited investor at this point, unfortunately. Oh. But what? It, How do you get accreditation? You just have to Is fill out a form online. Oh, but I can do that. Right? <laughs> yeah. yeah, we'll talk about it. After we'll talk about it after, <laughs> after the pod. Okay. <laughs> um, but anyways, that's there's the whole. So that's a really interesting thing, like fundraising, and I'm sure you've heard this. Like startup people talk about fundraising. It's like mm. a whole other job. Yeah, yeah. Like yeah. Pitching, it is like it is a huge thing. We are out of the design world right now. We are definitely not in design right now, right? Yeah, fundraising no. is not. I mean that's good. Keep going. It's it is not yeah. design. It's there's a little shred of design when you talk about like how do you put together your pitch deck mm. and how do you like craft your story that's true. That's about true. explaining mm-hmm. it yourself. But actually one of the things that sort of hurt us for a long time was we approached the pitch too much from a empathic design standpoint, mm. not a like like a infomercial, this is going to make you money. And it's going to like, like, and that's what like investors want to see. Like 
the numbers. It's going to make me 20, 20 X and it's going to be, at, it's going to be fast. And here's all the reasons why like yeah. they need boom, that boom, cold boom. hard cash. You know yeah. what I'm saying? But does it go all the way that way or is it just a mixture of the two? Yeah. So it is, it is a mixture. Like yeah. you have to, well, we got so far towards like, this is like, we were just like, like that whole idea of like, um, the user interface of the of voice technology, like we were going there in mm, pitch conversations, right. right? So it left the potential angel investor, the potential investor, the only option was to like discuss that, and that oh. like it's like an opinion, like are we right, or are we wrong, right? Right. It's like instead driving the conversation to like we're gonna sell fifty million units in year five, mm. you know? Yeah. Well. We can debate that. Maybe it's 20. Still, we're being successful, right? <laughs> Instead of like, so it's like, how do you steer your conversation for the person you're talking to? Mm, yeah. You know, like if I, when I'm talking to design people and I love talking about like the, the nitty gritty of like the psychology of what we're doing. Um, because Ovi is like, I finished the ID work. The industrial design for Ovi was done like two years ago right and I don't, <laughs> we we haven't really explained the industrial design of this product i mean like we said it's these led indicators that you can put attached to food one of them i guess i see here is a, a clip yeah you can attach it to food there's also a container a tup, a that tup has it and a, and a clip yeah so the the heart of the product if you scroll down a little bit yeah so those little that little disc that's floating there yeah by the way, shout out to Tim Zarkey for Zarky. the animation here. Yeah. Um, so that that we call that the smart tag. All the okay. technology is in that tag, mm. and then everything else is an accessory. So scroll back up. Right, and so, it's just this disc with this LED ring. Yeah, it's one button in the middle and okay. an LED ring. Okay, and it goes in the produce clip or the container, and the one on the left we call the sticker. So that's like it's a little puck that it sits in with a pu gel adhesive on the back mm. so it's like it's basically adhesive that you can st stick and restick. it's kind of like the the like thing that's in your car dashboard yep, exactly right okay. right that's yep. exactly what i say uh so you can wash it off if it gets dirty okay. um so you can stick that to your existing food container so you don't have to buy like all our containers oh like you know you can you stick it to your pyrex ta the takeout box from chinese place you just stick it you can stick it on a okay. takeout box you can like stick that. it on hummus nice. you know cream Not, cheese don't stick it whatever. inside the hummus no. <laughs> on the outside on the outside right on the outside, okay. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know it's always fun to lick off your ovi <laughs> that's, oh, that oh that sounds terrible really weird <laughs> oh, you hand boy. it to your kid it's oh, like boy. the cake batter thing <laughs> oh no so so the uh, the way it works is you you put the the, the smart tag and whatever you want to save you press the button you say alexa tell ovi this is Spinach, Brussels sprouts, takeout, whatever. And we will automatically program the tag with a duration based on that food type. Mm. So okay, like so you four just, days, six days, eight days, whatever. So, so I just take my uh, OV tag, I stick it on my Chinese takeout container and, and say, hey, Alexa, I, what? This is fried rice. This is fried rice. And then it's all good. Yeah. That's nice. And so when you do that, the light on the tag will turn green saying that it's been freshly tagged. Okay. Mm. And it'll show up in your app. Now, you don't have to take your phone out. So we wanted to make the whole system work without yes. requiring this the user to pull their phone out. I like this. <laughs> this is good. Yeah, right. You're talking to a potential investor. Here. <laughs> I already have my checkbook out. <laughs> How many zeros? <laughs> Here's a blank check. Yeah. So uh, once... So the... Once you've sort of entered it in there, right? So it goes in your your digital fridge, we call it, in your in your app, and it's also being tracked like on the, our servers under your under your name, right? Mm -hmm. And we let's say you have a couple other things tagged in there. So our whole goal is to nudge you, like convince you to eat your food before it goes bad, right? Right. So a lot of people are like, oh, so it reminds me when my or it tells me when my food's gone bad. Well, that's pointless that's right. useless information right right like throw out your food well thanks i would have done that anyway right. Right. <laughs> right, right, right. <laughs> so w w we have that information we know when it's going to go bad so we kind of know when the halfway point is and even if we're off by a couple days halfway halfway to six days is still before 
yeah, you know, yeah. four days, yeah. right? Yeah. Anyway, so the whole point is to motivate you to eat it. So we do that by like recommending recipes for different things you have tagged. Ah, so we can say like, here's a meal you can make out of the uh, feta cheese and the you know chicken breast uh-huh. you have. That's wow. cool. Here's a salad, okay. and then here's the ingredients you don't have. Uh, you can order them through Instacart or through like Amazon Fresh. Okay. And then so it's like making a meal kit for you to make at home, but using ingredients you already have that instead is... of like a full on meal kit. Or yeah, like, so... hey, have some. It's it's two o'clock in the afternoon, and you know if you share your location data with us, we can say, hey, you're at home and it's two o'clock in the afternoon. How about some carrots? Like, mm. not because like we want you to eat carrots, but it's like. We know you have carrots, and like, does it, so it's like, does it say that with chocolate though? It's two afternoon. How about some chocolate? <laughs> yeah. Does it say that? If you no? tag your chocolate, we'll remind you to eat it. How Sweet. about that? Yeah. <laughs> uh, I mean, we can we can put in like you can in in our app. You can set, set your dietary restrictions and all that uh, stuff. Yeah. Any sort of like if you're trying to not eat carbs or I mean eat less th- sugar. This seems like the most efficient way to to uh, eat the food in your fridge, right? Like. I feel like a lot. I mean, your whole basis for this thing was reducing food waste. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. Yeah, we. Th- I mean, I can attest to how much food we end up forgetting about and throwing away yeah. in our house. It's it's you're not alone. Americans waste about. It's about well, overall in the entire food supply chain, it's forty percent of the food. Yeah, the largest percentage of that forty percent happens in the home, mm. which. Turns out to be about twenty five percent per family. Yeah, um, which can be like two thousand dollars for an average family yeah. a year that they just throw away. Dang. Now, can you make a, a mobile OV tag that I could put on leftovers at the restaurant so I don't forget them <laughs> to bring them home? <laughs> that happens <laughs> that all have, the time. Does that have GPS on it? That happens. There's GPS on here. <laughs> hey, Next you generation. forgot it. <laughs> Version two. Yeah. yeah. That's that's interesting, but the the cool thing and the the thing that I think is for the for the industrial design minded people out there, our listeners, like it went from being like design the physical manifestation of this idea, right? Which was, I'll say it was easy, right? Like yeah. I, I I try not to stress too much Just about a circle with LED on it. Yeah, like I my design philosophy is like like simple geometry with playful details. Yeah, it's mm. like. The way I think about things, yeah, you should definitely splice this video into the. Oh, into it's the, happening! Oh, uh, this is some Tim Zarki we're watching, magic. We're watching a. We're watching it. <laughs> fancy rendering of the OV. What do you call it? Smart Disc? tag. Smart tag, uh, disassembled, Ooh. coming together. We're seeing this uh, microchip with all these little uh, capacitors and things <laughs> connect down. <laughs> Listen, there's people on the subway listening to right the tell audio I book tell version <laughs> of this podcast. Yeah, and then it's like it's 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 assembling itself and into the Brussels different... sprouts are flying through the air. Yeah. Oh my god. Yeah, you're definitely going to going to want to check that out on the YouTube. Yeah. Um So anyways, is... there's there's this whole like the the actual like design of the product was simple. Right. right? right. It was done like it, it was a sort of a no-brainer. Right. It's a container, duh. It's a clip, duh. Uh, it needs to have a circle. Like those things just came together. But the ecosystem. That's what's really amazing. And I've ha- I've been having a lot of fun like designing the system yeah. and designing the future potential for the system. I mean, yeah. the whole the whole Alexa and the voice connected thing really makes it work, in my opinion. I mean, if it was like some sort of weird thing where you had to like pull out an app and like figure out what food you're eating right now and like scroll through and click this button, like I feel like that wouldn't make any sense. But all you have to do is like stick it on there and say, "Hey Alexa, this is fried rice," and you just put it in yeah. there. Yeah, and the, so there's this cool. Ooh, a hub! I like that hub. Mm. We're looking at the <laughs> the whole system here. So this the, is the the hub, hub is a basically a gateway that lets the smart tags communicate with our back end, okay. whether mm. you're home or not. I see. So they're not connecting to your phone; they're connecting through the hub. Right. Cool. So you plug it in behind your toaster. Never think about it again. Yeah. Um, so, so oh, were you gonna say something? Well, I was just gonna say like Go the um, what was I gonna say? Sorry, it's okay. I got sidetracked. Sorry, it's probably dumb, anyways. <laughs> <laughs> well, what were you gonna say? Well, what I what I want to do was to sort of push this 
you know, not out of the OV sphere, mm-hmm. but but in conjunction. Okay, so I'm a married man. Yeah. And I I am looking forward to a life of of remaining married while also having children and being an industrial designer. Dave, you have a wife and three children. I do. I would love to know how you've managed all of what you've just described to us with the family involved. Yes, I am really curious as well. Okay, yeah. so first, my wife, Kim, she is amazing. Uh, she supported me through everything I've done. Hasn't yeah. always been easy, but she believes in me and believes in what I'm doing. Um, her family has entrepreneurial backgrounds too, so mm-hmm. that really helps. She understands um, – also, she stays at home with the kids, so that's uh, really makes it possible for me to, like, I don't know if I would be so gung ho about, you know, traveling around the world trying to do all these different things if um, we didn't have. Not that you have to be a stay at home mom. I don't want to say that, but like from where we are, like I like the idea that my wife's home, their mom is with them. Yeah, and like it makes me feel comfortable, right. like going out and like taking on the world because right. like home is home. Uh, and the other thing is, we live in the suburbs, which it's actually like kind of in the country. Like we live across the street from a horse farm. Mm. We have we don't have the property, but we're part of a neighborhood that has a bunch of property with like creeks and hiking nice. trails and tennis courts and like there's a clubhouse. And right. Yeah. So we, I, I. Like, our family unit is sort of, it seems well protected in that sense, I guess. Yeah. Like, they they enjoy, like, playing outside in the summer and sledding in the winter. And they kind of have this nice, like, uh, family life going. And it lets me feel comfortable to go out and spend all my time doing this. And when I'm home on the weekends, like, I'm home and there's not, like, the distraction of, like, you know all this other stuff going on. I'm just focused yeah. on family. I mean, I feel like that is, it seems like you kind of dedicate chunks of time and, and kind of divvy it up. Yeah. I, I yeah. feel like I'm not good at that at all. It's just yeah, like I, mine's going all the time. I, don't I didn't that. explain that well. And actually, because like I have to like, and yeah. I, I, I'm, I have a similar tendency of just like, so some day I'll, I'm totally stuttering, but like I'll I'll come home some days after like really being deep in something, yeah. Mm. And Kim will be like, um, "You you're gonna show up tonight?" <laughs> 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 like, because I'm still just like crunching right. numbers yeah, or like right. building cat in my head yeah. or just trying to solve some design right. problem, yeah, all the time. And yeah. it's 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 I've learned through having a family that. It's really good to just like say, you know what? I'm like I I pull up in to, to to my garage, turn off the car, and I go like, okay, I'm at home, home time. Yeah, you know. Yeah. And yeah. I walk in the garage, and it's like I got, you know, I have a, a six year old, oh, sorry, five year old, a three year old, and a one year old. Wow. Yeah. So my, you know, the the three-year-old and the five-year-old are just jumping on me and we do like climb the tree and you know uh ride on the boat like there's all these like games we do when i get home yeah you know and so it's like putting myself fully into that so i can be you know a great dad yeah that's Um, awesome and it's 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 so rewarding it's also like cripplingly like uh, it makes you cry at things you never thought you'd cry at. Like I was watching this movie on the plane out here this morning, and I was like, just like started crying at this dumb scene. And it was like, it was like a, it, I don't even remember what it was, but I was like, why am I crying about this? But it was some like dad daughter moment, and I was uh, like, it just yeah. hit me, you know, like so it makes you a little weak, but in the in the in a good way. You yeah, know? Um, that's awesome. I, I, yeah, I feel like that's. I feel like you're doing it the right way. Yeah. I feel like a lot of startup stories, especially since you know, I, I listen to that startup podcast, it's just sometimes you can get too deep. Yeah. yeah and I, so my, I'll, I'll have to, if I don't mention this, Kim will be a, well, I don't know what she'll feel, but the, for the first year, I, I did it wrong. Okay. Like mm. I was 
like at the office late. I was at the office until like I was there all the time. Right. right. And I would either like not show up or, or like show up super late or I'd just like crash at the office. Right. Or I'd crash at my parents' house that was like halfway yeah. to my house because I'm like, wow, well, it's just like be easier to get back in the morning, you know? And yeah. like it was, it, it, was not healthy it mm. was the wrong way and i i had two kids at the time and it was like i wasn't i mean i was there on the weekends right and i could justify it in my head as saying like this is important i've got stuff to do um but now it's like that became the the norm like mm. insane workload became right. the norm instead of the exception so yeah. it's like i need to make i just you know you know talking with cam she helped me like come to terms with this it wasn't always an easy conversations, but you know, right. it it realized that like you have to make, you have to de- you have to th- be deliberate about like your choices on how you want to live your life. Yeah, yeah, and because if, sure. if you don't, you'll just like I'll just go and like be design brain all the time, and like I'll never go out of that mode. Right, and it's like it just saying like, well, that's how I am. Is not like it's not <laughs> healthy, right? Because <laughs> like that's how, and I I love it's a comfortable place for me to be. Yeah, and like, so it's like it doesn't feel bad for me to be like grinding on problems all the time in my head. Like right. I feel like I'm accomplishing things, and I feel you know dedicated to work. Um, but like that's not. It's at the end of the day, that's not as good. Yeah, as, like there's better things if you decide to like pursue them. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, uh, th- that's interesting. I- and I'm like glad that you brought up the, the, your first year, because I mean, you know, even, even relationships and figuring out, figuring out how to spend your time and how to spend it so that you are contributing to the relationship and you're being there for that person and, and for your family. Like, that's the thing about life is is just like with design, it is an iterative process. Mm. You know, you're you're constantly trying to figure out like how does the situation how how do I contribute to the situation so that you know it it functions well without me with me you know and I'm there for it when I'm when I'm there and yeah I mean I think yeah. that that's that's kind of how it is. Yeah, I mean I love I love hearing that, Dave. Like it's it's great to hear that you've built to this point now i know we're a little long but i kind of want to hear like the the plans for the the startup like are you excited yeah. like what where where can people support this purchase it so where, where are we in the start the yeah, uh, launching good, process good good question so we are delayed in the launching process okay. um so to Quickly to support us, you can follow us on Instagram or at Fridge Smarter. So, okay. Fridge, Fridge Smarter, Fridge mm. Smarter. We'll link to it. Uh, and then our website is ov. Life. You can sign up for our our newsletter there and keep up to date with everything we're doing. Okay. Um, you can pre order our product on our website. Um, Boom. We don't have nice. <laughs> <laughs> James just followed Fridge Smarter. <laughs> we don't have like a a, a set ship date yet. Mm-hmm. um we're we're trying to work through it, it it's way more complicated than we thought it was going to be right and like nobody on our team has a tech background so we're we're trying mm. to like figure out the tech as we go yeah so it's it's really complicated and you know we're running into road at, roadblock after roadblock we're solving them but we just keep hitting them right. so um we're we don't know when we're shipping we had a kickstarter back in uh last june mm-hmm. and we said we were going to ship in february and we're still not shipped so but our backers are really cool um probably because most of them are our family and friends <laughs> 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 but uh yeah we've we they've been really generous or you know kind and in, in just being patient with us yeah um so we're basically almost ready uh with like our, our, our prototype and our whole system is almost completely functional. Yeah. Minus a few little pieces. Uh, we've been to China. We picked out our manufacturer. Um, we have all the quotes. The DFM is almost done besides the little things that they'll have to do once they have the final like 
parts and everything. Yeah. Sourcing components has been fun. Like, uh, I've, I've, I've basically been, if, I hope nobody's listening that are in these different companies, but I've been like <laughs> pitting the, the different uh, component companies against each other. Do you, do you We've think got we a have... huge component company f- <laughs> listener base. You know, I, I actually did post our podcast on Alibaba the other day. <laughs> It's gotten a hundred views. It's good. Yeah, nice. There's already a Chinese ripoff of our podcast. Our podcast. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so we're we're in a good place. Uh, it it feels like it, it's frustrating because we're not like actively shipping when we right. should be. Yeah. Um, but you know that's 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 the life it, of I, trying to do something that you don't know how to do. I mean, better that it's good than. You ship it too early, you know? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, we, we're full believers that, like, uh, we want to make the product really, uh, you know, magical for people. Right. Instead of, like, oh, man. Nah. Right. I totally <laughs> didn't live up to right. the... <laughs> yeah. You don't want to go the Juicero route. Oh, no, God. The other no. connected devices. A lot of them, a lot of them die. Yeah. Yeah. But, I mean, I think, I think what you guys have going on right now seems really promising. So, I'm excited to, to keep up with the story. Oh, thank you. Yeah. Um, it is really cool to be a part of. And the other thing I, so we didn't really get to talk about um, my design consulting or my oh, right. contract work and freelance stuff. Yeah. It's all really exciting too. It's like, uh, I'll just say one thing about it since we're already way over time. But uh, in not doing like industrial design for Ovi in over two years, yeah. I hit a point about a year and a half ago where I was like feeling this like I was feeling really crappy about everything mm. about career like what did I do this for why am I doing this okay and, and this cuz you were just deep in the business yeah i you hadn't, done, hadn't industrial done industrial design stuff. in a while okay, yeah, yeah. yeah and i and and i'd sort of like neglected even the bit of contracting i had done to try to get ov done and and just i, I mean just as an anecdote like going back into like getting clients freelance clients contract clients his it's just amazing how like light that feels to actually like go back and do creative work again that's so, kind of interesting yeah. that's, that's fun yeah that's good to hear for sure no that is interesting because because yeah i mean like the fact that you are both pursuing the startup and consulting i mean that's like i would think that that doing the startup would just consume all of your time but i can also see how like if you're doing a lot of business stuff i feel like it seems like there might be some more interaction and emails going on where you might have right an hour. To yeah. Like, yeah. Well, and I kind of like, the, I had to make the time mm. is kind of what I'm saying is like, yeah. I decided that it was like, it's, it's really important for me. Well, financially to like make some money, but also just for my mental, you know, well being, your sanity, you my just sanity. have to get back in there and sketch. like, I needed to do it. And the other thing was like, is I, I only got on Instagram, uh, like maybe, two years ago or something yeah and that was another thing was like i got on instagram i didn't really mess around with it and then um, around that same time i was like i'm gonna do these render weekly things i'm gonna get involved like yeah and use that as a way of like getting you know scratching that creative itch so uh you know no that's awesome yeah i mean i that's another thing i kind of wanted to listen to so i'm glad you added that in dave yeah um but yeah i mean Thank you so much again for coming on the pod. Like yeah. our first, like, I mean, Dave is an active Discord user, so yeah. if you guys want to hear more from Dave, join yeah. the Discord. Yeah. And Dave, Dave, sorry, Dave has uh, has a couple times done some portfolio reviews oh, no. on yes. the Discord. Oh, no. You're just gonna get. Do, a do ton. not advertise that, but <laughs> yeah, we just advertise. No, that. I want to push all the portfolio oh, wow. reviews. No, to honestly, Dave. like, Dave, I'm so sorry. Yeah, <laughs> I, I don't speak on James's. Behalf. I will shut it down if it gets out of hand, but like, honestly, like. People help me so much throughout right. my career, and I'm happy to give back. So until it becomes ridiculous, I'll just say, <laughs> yeah. hit me up. Let me know how I can help. No, it's awesome. I won't be nice. <laughs> I'm I'm not a very nice portfolio <laughs> reviewer. You're honest. That's yeah. what we need. That's great. No, I, I yeah, I really want to thank you, Dave, for coming on and, and being such an active part of like this minor details community and. Yeah, yeah, we're we're super excited that you got on here to share yeah. your story. Yeah, thanks for having me. It's been uh, it's been cool to to chat and share, and yeah, thanks for doing minor details. Like, yeah, it's awesome that that this exists. I'll just say 
Well, uh, yeah, I mean, I, I'm glad, again, for the community that supported us. Yeah, for sure. Um, YouTube? Spotify? Well, and where, well, where can people find you, Dave? Yeah. Oh, yeah. So uh, my Instagram is at Dave Joseph yeah. dash ID. Okay. Yeah. Um, and, or you can look up my website, which is the same thing, Dave Joseph dash ID dot com. Okay. Cool. Um, and you then, can email me there, I guess. Yeah. There's a and contact. OV. OV. And then life. OV is OV dot life. Um, and we're frid- at Fridge Smarter on Instagram. And I'll link all these things in the, in the yeah. description and everything. Yeah. For sure. Um, but yeah, uh, shout out, uh, Kiyoshi the Kid, intro and outro. Uh, I, I've been kind of wanting to get our iTunes ranking up again. I think we've dropped down to 40 on the design. No, category. that's ridiculous. We used to be 37. That's until we release the Dave Joseph podcast. Mm, that's uh, right. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, give, give, give the, yeah. uh, if you guys listen to Apple podcasts, I'll, give that thing five stars. I'll say like, I, I forget who, which podcaster does this, but he has this great way of saying, he's like, Go over to, he goes, go over to uh, YouTube, or not YouTube, go over to Apple Podcasts and give it a five-star rating and just put those five stars out into the universe <laughs> and they'll come back to you someday. <laughs> yeah. Perfect. Oh, yeah. Man. So do that. Yeah. Um, but yeah. <laughs> thanks, thanks for listening, guys. As always, I'm at Nick P. Baker. I'm at I and Drawn Receipts. And I'm at Dave Joseph Dash ID. Peace out. Later. Hey, welcome to Minor Details. Okay. <laughs> hey, welcome to Minor Details.